Okay, we're going to start out with a yellow front end. The veins over here where my thumb is moving are a bit depleted and have lost their color. We see darkness over here. We see some movement. He's getting close to hatching, yet we see no pit marks. So, we're going to go in this egg and see what kind of problems exist. First thing we're going to do is we're, we see a low pit mark here. We're going to go in just above the pit mark. Since it's low, normally the pit mark would have been made we were going in with this dental tool. And we're going to open up a very small area to look inside. We hear the check. It appears very healthy. There's the egg tooth. And we have a lot of fluid up here that we should normally not have. A lot of sticky membrane. So we're going to clear this away from his mouth. And it appears that that might have been responsible for quite a bit of the problem. There he is. We can look down inside and see that the yolk looks mostly absorbed. We would want to put him back and let him cook for a few more hours. Perhaps another 12. Now that we've opened the shell and he can breathe and we've relieved him of that sticky membrane that was, as we see, right here had his head kind of glued to the top of the shell. Now he can breathe as he should be at this stage. He can absorb the rest of the oak and be ready for tomorrow. Now, the rest of this membrane in here will dry and will glue him in place. But that's okay since tomorrow or late this evening we will take him out ourselves. At this point, it's take the bird and Put it in a little basket, back into the hatcher. Uh, chick this far of long does not have to be placed in a in a baggie or anything like that to delay evaporation. Because at this point we want the chick to dry up, draw up his yolk, so we can proceed to take him out. Okay, here we are about eight hours later and doing fine, very verbal, very active. Of course he is stuck to the dried membrane which of course kept him from moving around and doing any damage to the yolk before he absorbed it, but being stuck to the membrane with the shell open and breathing well is a lot better than being stuck to the membrane and not being able to externally pip and breathe air and hence you have suffocation. There you see a pipping movement and in pushing with his foot which he has moved up. Now let's open up see what we got here at this point. Take the 
some distilled water. That's nice and warm and that will re-moisten the membrane so we can lift it off them. Give it a little bit more freedom of movement. And here we have the head popping up. And as you see, there's quite a lot of dried fluids and gummy fluids. This is not normal. These are some of the things that appeared to be dark that we saw when we candled. As we look down, we don't see any yolk. We do see a mess of fluids. which had the bird balled up. We see a grossly extended navel. This is one of those birds that would have never made it out of the shell. And we would have wondered why. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to Up through here, not to pull any thing that shouldn't be pulled. This is what we're faced with here. There is a little bit of yolk that is still extended. have some necrotic tissue here which we're going to cut, which we've just done. When I try never to pull anything away from the air, we always cut. We're going to mop this a little bit. Now that should be no problem. We're going to see if it'll pop in with a minimal of pressure. And if not, we're not going to worry about it too much.